So if you are planning LASIK, which means to find an option to your spectacles, uh, I'm sure you have many queries and you have many apprehensions. So I'm doing a short educational video just to explain you what the procedure is, what are the pros and cons, what you need to do pre and post the procedure. So first and foremost, are you a eligible candidate for LASIK? So you are eligible for LASIK if you are 19 plus. Um, there is no upper limit to getting the LASIK done. Your numbers, refractive error, the spectacle power should have been stable for more than a year. And there is no local ocular pathology, which of course we would be checking for you and telling you whether your eyes are fit for LASIK or not. One OPD visit, which is a detailed, you know, refractive error or a spectacle power workup. We check on your eyes different parameters. So we look at your eyelids, we look at your tear film to rule out any severe dry eye, um, you know, and then we'll do your corneal scans, which are very, very important. And we will show you what those scans look like. Uh, then we look at your retina, all myopes, because the eyeball is a little stretched. So your retina can also be stretched and all myopes, whether you're getting LASIK done or not, um, it's mandatory to get your retinal periphery examination done to make sure that there are no silent holes or tear because rarely these can lead to retinal detachments. So for all myopes, we say that the retinal periphery screening is important. So one OPD visit where we do all kinds of your, uh, you know, checkups, eye checkups, your spectacle powers, your eye diagnostics, your retinal checkup is when we decide that whether your eyes are fit for laser or not. If there is any gray area in any of these parameters, then one would say that no, stick to your spectacles or contact lenses and LASIK is not for you. So in the pre-LASIK checkup, a corneal examination is very important. So these are different machines, the diagnostic platform, where we check the anterior and posterior curvature of your cornea to rule out any irregularity, thinning, steepening. You know, if there is any issue in the cornea, then we wouldn't go ahead with the uh, LASIK for you. Uh, we also check your normal aberration. So apart from spectacle powers, if your eye is not a complete perfect optical system, so if you have aberrations, we correct that also along with your spectacle power and that's called um, a Xi wave or a wave front corrected uh, technology. So these are just different diagnostic platforms where a thorough checkup before your LASIK is done to screen and say that yes, your cornea or your eyes are perfect to go ahead with the LASIK procedure. So once your diagnostic tests are complete and we have given you a date and time for LASIK, in the pre-operative phase, there's nothing much to do except that you start antibiotic eye drops as your surgeon will prescribe for you. If you're a contact lens wearer, then you should stop your contact lens uh, before the LASIK for at least a week. You should be scrubbing your face and your eyelids uh, very properly for the first few days before LASIK so that there is no debris and your eyelids and eyelashes are completely clean for the procedure. So once the diagnostic tests confirm that yes, you are fit for LASIK, the second question comes, what type of procedure or what type of LASIK? Because, you know, I'm sure you've read a lot by this time on the internet and there are different machines and different procedures uh, mentioned there because different companies float different kind of promotional activities on the net. So you have to understand the primary procedure in a LASIK is divided into two steps. One is making a corneal flap. Cornea is this front mirror like portion of your eye. So we raise a very thin corneal flap, say a 19 or a 90 or a 100 micron, like a very thin polythene sheet. And on the bed of the cornea, on the stroma, we reshape your cornea. We give laser, eczymer laser to reshape your cornea in microns at a very minute level to correct your spectacle power. So what your spectacles are doing out from outside, like shifting your image bang onto the retina for you to see clearly. The same thing is done by the eczymer laser to reshape your cornea and to give a similar effect. Now, different platforms of LASIK and different machines have different names. Uh, don't go by the names or by the machine. All you should make sure that the machines are top of the league. Uh, your you know consultant or your surgeon is well aware of the latest procedure and is apt and skilled to do it. And let him or her make that choice for you. LASIK eczymer laser platform where all the details of the patients, all the measurements that we have done on the scans has been pre-feeded and the laser delivery will be done on this machine. So this is a femto machine where the femtosecond laser is used to create the flap of the cornea. So because we are not using a micro keratome or a blade, uh, this becomes laser assisted, more safe and more uh, precise, uh, which is selected for more complicated cases or thin corneas or where we want to customize our LASIK flap. We 
take you inside LASIK OT to give a live overview of the procedure. The OT duration total for a patient is 10 to 15 minutes where the actual laser delivery time is only in seconds. It's a walk-in walk-out procedure done completely under local anesthesia which is the drops form. Here we are doing the first step that's docking and I'm creating the vacuum on the eye with a PI and here you can see a live image where the cornea comes on to the docking mechanism. Once I get an adequate suction or vacuum, there's I get a green signal, press the foot pedal to activate the femto laser. So here you can see how in a ring form the laser bubbles can be seen creating a cleavage to a predetermined flap, corneal flap say 100 to 100. 20 micron is the first step created by the laser. Now we take the patient onto the second machine and lift this corneal flap which has already been created either with laser or with microkeratome. Once we lift the flap, we use an eye tracker to fix onto the cornea and the iris pattern is recognized. Eczymer laser is done to reshape the cornea. It takes few seconds to do it depending on the refractive error or the spectacles power. And once the eczymer laser is done, we just wash off the cornea bed and uh, any debris is removed from there, smoothen out the corneal flap. There is no suturing or anything involved and the patient just walks out uh, of the procedure without any pad and bandage. On the day of procedure, the procedure actually on table is not more than 7-8 minutes procedure in total. Um, so we call you like an half an hour or one hour prior, prepare you for the procedure and then post it, you are resting for half an hour, one hour. So in the center, you primarily for say maximum 2 hours or so. On the day of your LASIK when it's done, it's a rest day. So that day, most of the time you're just at home. Um, you're putting your eye drops, we explain you the basic eye hygiene to be maintained and from the next day you can resume most of your normal activities. Vision restoration first day is blurry, um, so don't expect any dramatic thing on the first day. Next day your vision is restored, restored quite a bit, um, almost 90 to 95 percent and the way when you go for new contact lenses or spectacles, this is a new optical system. So give it few days for the final vision to settle because eyes are dynamic structure, your eyes are accommodating. So every next few days your vision will improve. Initially there may be night uh, driving glare and uh, halos issues because on the LASIK we make an optical zone in the center of your cornea. So there could be a little diffraction and a little uh, glare or halos which you feel and all this settles down over the next few weeks. Uh, in the post-operative phase, apart from resting on the day one as I said, from the next day you can resume most of your normal activities. You can be a bit on the mobile and computer but not for long hours because when you're on the screen, you're blinking less and there's more dryness. So we give you a lot of lubricating eye drops initially but sure you can do soft work, you can start and you can resume full-time work in another day or two uh, post LASIK. Basic eye hygiene, how to keep your eyes clean, not to put direct shower and water into your eyes for 4-5 days is what we recommend. Uh, don't go swimming or you know heavy strenuous exercise for the first 4-5 days and after that practically you can completely resume your normal uh, lifestyle. So after understanding how the procedure is done, let's also talk about what is not so perfect about LASIK or what are your apprehensions. So one of the most common questions I get asked is that, is this a permanent procedure? Well, uh, eye is a dynamic structure. If you were naturally to develop a power and especially post 40 when you get a reading power, press biopia will come in. Uh, small uh, refractive errors like a 0 0.25, 0 0.5 if your eyes are changing or accommodating, that may happen. Uh, so that's a natural part. What we, number you have right now, that gets corrected. Uh, that's the aim of the procedure. Secondly, uh, sometimes there can be a uh, phenomena called regression where when we reshape your cornea and make it flat, the elasticity of the cornea of few people is such that the flattening effects goes down and because of the steepening, there could be a small refractive error which comes up again. Um, happens very rarely. It can happen. If it has to happen, it can happen within few years also. But as I said, that it's a rare phenomenon. But yes, that can happen in LASIK. Secondly, night driving or initially glare uh, by looking at lights can be felt by some people because the LASIK is done on the center of your cornea. So there's an optical zone, but few weeks or few months down the line, all that settles down. That is why looking at the pupil size and studying your cornea before LASIK is very important because if you have a larger pupil, 
uh, then these problems are uh, more uh, you know common all in all lathic is a very safe procedure very effective procedure but we have to screen the eyes properly before doing the lasik it's a short walk in walk out requires care of your eyes for the next few days and you resume your normal activities so i hope this uh, educational video has given you more clarity on lasik uh, and if you need to know anything more uh, just drop us a mail or a query on the phone number that we will be sharing with you um, have a happy healthy life have a happy enjoyable uh, day and happy vision to you